Seven. Turlock will bring the people who are far away, Miss Keneally's, and the rest of us will walk because someone who are very close. Meal for half past seven, make up quarter past eight, performance start has been rearranged now for nine o'clock, and that's been broadcast right in the gate so people on the island will know the word will spread. Alright? Uh, all baggage is coming here to the hall. So everybody pick up their own and bring it to the house with them. Okay? Grand. Do you want to start work now? Yeah. Yeah. Tonight we've been told okay. 100, 150, which is more than the hall it will take. More, much more than the hall will take. Fine. So, we'll be happy with the full house. I'm very nervous about it myself, but uh, I'm, I'm some, it's confident. I, I think they will like it, but uh, I mean, it could go the other way. But uh, I'm very, I'm really looking forward to it more than anything else. I'm very excited, really. Because um, I just haven't a clue what way they're going to react. Not, not an idea. Because um, with other theatre audiences, we've had, you know, people have criticised us from an artistic point of view, or they've sort of been very surprised at how naturalistic the whole thing is, you know. But just here, I think we're going to have a real gut reaction from people. They're going to be probably much more critical in a lot of ways, because they'll expect it to be very real. It is the first time the Playboy has ever been seen on the island and it is the place where Singh uh, got the idea for the play and got the, the basic story of the play. And um, I think it's a, it's, it, was a, it, it is a, at least an interesting thing to do to bring it back to, to the place where he, where he found out about the whole venture for the story first. It's in a sense bringing it back to its, to, its, um, to its own cradle in a way. And I'm sure they were going to like it. Everybody knows that with the Playboy riots and everything yeah. like that. Everybody knows that it was a very bad reaction okay. altogether. Mm -hmm. And Singh literally had to fight within the Abbey itself mm. uh, in the course of rehearsals. There was lines cut and uh, things like blasphemy were brought up and so really? on. And he had to fight for every word. And uh, he, he said at one stage, I know what the, what the, about the people of Ireland, the, those crowd up there don't know. And I'm going ahead with this. And what, about, kind of what about the Mayo Paddy? Well, I come from East Mayo, you know, where we'll say which is a similar country to what we'll say Singh was writing about. And when I hear people say that, we'll say he understood the soul of the people. You know, I read one columnist there, I think, made that comment, we'll say, even though he was very taken by, we'll say, Gary's production. Uh, I think, for, for me, speaking personally, that's where I think he fell down. He didn't truly... Where Singh fell down. Where Singh fell down that um, it was, if you like, an outsider looking in and not fully understanding the subject that he was researching, so to speak. No. Well, uh, we've, had, we've had multitudinous arguments yes, about this yes. in the course of a tour, in yeah. the course of many long nights in many hotels. Well, you know, I was born, we'll say, in the, um, in the aftermath of, we'll say, the period that, um, and we'll say my parents, for instance, were of that era, and we dealt with, we'll say, the people whom Singh was writing about. And I think where he failed was that he failed to capture the great love of the people of that area and the simple faith. I don't think that... Well, I, I mean, we've argued about it many times. Um, all right, he captured the turn of phrase, which isn't altogether true either, you know. But um, it sounds good. Uh, but, uh, he didn't, in my estimation, and I think I knew them better than Singh. A marvellous play. I mean, it's, it's, it's... I've done the production, this is the third production of it, and I cannot get over how um, alive the thing is for me each time, how, how much each time we do it, it's not a recreation of something before, that one is constantly discovering other levels in the play, other resonances. A small hall at night. The players prepare. Hey, 
And when anybody who knows somebody is exiting, make sure that the doors here are closed. Mm. Yeah. All right. Actually, the thing about don't exit until the door is open for you. When somebody hears you coming, mm. they'll actually open the door for you. Yes. Because that thing is just going to blow in. It's going to be completely ridiculous if those doors. Yeah, make an entrance on our own then. Well, there'll always be somebody. There'll always be somebody there. The Islanders and the players are coming together now. Six. Yet. Of. Stuff. To make a yellow gown. Well, the play opens with Peggy and Mike, who's a young girl, aged around 20, writing a letter ordering a wedding gown. She's obviously going to be married very soon. Then her affianced, Shawnee Kyo, enters. And we begin to realise as the first scene progresses that uh, Sean Kyo and herself aren't exactly well matched. And there isn't really that much love lost between them, but it's a good bargain. And the evening of the coming fair to Mr. Michael James Laherty. With the best, with the best compliments of this season, Margaret Flaherty. Uh, where's himself? He's coming. To Mr. Seamus Mulroy, wine and spirit dealer, Castle Bear. I didn't see him on the road. How would you see him in a dark night this half hour gone by? I stood a while outside, uh, wondering what I have a right to pass on. Or to walk in and see a pigging mic. And I could hear the cows breathing and sighing in the stillness of the air. Not a step moving any place from this gate to the bridge.